There are a ton of modifiers out there on the market today. Everything from umbrellas to soft boxes to octobanks to beauty dishes and all of that. Today we're going to talk about some different kind of modifiers. For a long time, my grid solution for a hot shoe flash was this hot mess right here. It's a Gary Fong light sphere that I painted black and put gaff tape all over. And I would stick that onto my hot shoe flash like, come on, Lumber Pro's fat, like that. Then I would take a little bungee cord and I would wrap this around here. There, there is my grid spot solution for hot shoe flash for a long time. But I don't use this anymore. To hell with this and to hell with that, I now have the mag mod. The mag mod is a very simple kind of process, all right? It comes with this rubber ringy thing here that has huh, magnets in it. And you stretch this over your hot shoe flash head, the Luma Pro being a little bit of a tight fit. It's very simple and easy to put on. And then it comes with some grids and some gel holders. And by the power of magnetism, it just goes right on. That looks much better. It's easier to travel with. And if you need to take the grid off, you can just swivel it around or bring it back up, take it all off together. You can also get a pack of colored filters, and this is their accessory pack that holds all of the filters in one place. And you can pop in a color or neutral density or a color correction gel and just stick that right on your flash. And with it being magnets, you can add more onto it, like so. You can just keep stacking them up. It's really the best grid I have found for Hot Shoe Flash. Oh, I've got the MagMod up here. I am at 164th power on the Luma Pro. I'm at 180th of a second at 5.6. ISO 100. So Kate, let me have you just kind of looking right there. Perfect, hold that. So that grid is just keeping the light right on Kate and not on anywhere else in the background. Just to show you what this looks like without a flash firing, it's a completely black frame. I'm killing all the ambient in this room. We mainly have all of this ambient for the video. If you want to add a little more separation, you can do so by bringing in another light. I'm going to throw another grid on it. All right. So I've got a second light back here, gridded as well with the mag mod, and it is on 64, 30 second, 30 second power on that Luma Pro. Make sure everything's firing the way it should. Face kind of right over there, perfect. Hold that, great. Now, let's say you wanna change that white background, you wanna change it to a color, you wanna make it a cheesy, 80s album cover. I don't know, whatever it is you want to do. I'm going to take this up to 16th power. So none of the light from my main light is hitting the background. And so that's making the background dark. So what I'm going to do is pop a little bit of color from the MagMod filter holder with a red filter in it. And that should add some color to that white. Good, chin up for me just a bit. Right there, hold that. So, you can take that white wall, make it red, make it blue, make it green, make it whatever you want. Uh, let's kill this stuff, put a strobo gobo on, see what we do with that. There have been times that I have a plain background, similar to the one behind me now, that I wanna break up with some sort of pattern or shadow. And I keep these sticks around and I roll them in and out and I shoot lights through them as, as a gobo, a go-between. 
but I don't have to use that anymore because now I have the Strobo Gobo. The last light Strobo Gobo is this little plastic unit here that has a series of Fresnel lenses in it. The flash fires through there and it focuses that light into a tighter beam. And what's cool about this is that you can buy Roscoe B-size Gobos and these are available on the market. They've been around for years and you can drop them in and you can project whatever is cut out of that Gobo. In fact, I've been experimenting with this a little bit. I've been using a laser printer and transparency paper and printing my own things, cutting it out to the size, dropping it in, and it projects it right to the wall. Now, it's a little different from some of the other projectors that you've seen that use slides or something like that and a Canon or a Nikon lens. It's, it's not that quite involved. It's basically just shapes and patterns and then if you want to get into making your own things. Now, typically to mount it to a hot shoe flash, you need to have Lastolite's little lollipop bracket thing. But here's what we've done. We have the MagMod system here. And we took this apart and we epoxied some uh, pretty strong magnets on the inside of this. And now we can just stick it to our MagMod. How I'm going to set this up, I have the little wide angle diffuser popped out. I need light to kind of be spreading. Um, and then I'm using this MagMod uh, gel holder just as a spacer. And instead of using the lollipop thing, I just mount that right there. And the Gobo, I'm just using kind of a random pattern sort of thing. Now, something like this Strobo Gobo you can use on a background just to add some sort of texture going on. Perfect, holding right there, Kate. If you just want to, to break up a flat uh, surface with a little shadow, you can soften those shadows a bit, taking out this middle Fresnel. Perfect, right there. Kind of face this way, right there. Hold that. Let me see that. And one interesting thing to do with this is to use it as a main light. Perfect, right there. Right on, looks good. Just bring your eyes to me. Excellent. And let's take that Fresnel out and defocus it a little bit. Perfect, right there, hold that. It's just a Kind of nice dappled light right there, hold that. It's a nice little play of light. And you can pick up these, these gobos. Uh, in fact, you can kind of make your own in a circle and cut stuff out, print it out on transparency, whatever you want to do. Um, it's a dang cool little accessory to have. There are some modifiers out on the market that can be pretty easily classified as a one trick pony. And a ring flash is one of those. I had an Alien B ring flash for a few years and I found that I only used it once or twice a year. Um, I kind of like that look, but it can be a little cliche at times, it can be a little dated at times. Sometimes clients like it, so it's good to have a ring flash around. You never know when it might be useful. But I didn't need a dedicated ring flash. So what I did is I sold my Alien B ring flash and I picked up the Orbis. I am at F4 ISO 200 at 180 of a second uh, with the ring flash here. And the way I have this set up is just on a stand. There's a whole bracket thing and you can mount it and the thing and the thing and I don't know, it's kind of a big pain in the butt for me when I can just stick this right here and either go through the viewfinder or from the back of the camera. I mean, honestly, I use this once or twice a year. Um, sometimes I use it as an on-axis fill. Sometimes it's the client has requested that look. They might put that together in a mood board. So that's why I have it, it's cool. So, and again, yep, perfect. Smiling, smiling, happy. 
Yes, you're young and free. Yeah, oh, that's the shot right there. Damn, bam. Done, done, love it. Okay. <laughs> that's what I want. There we go. And we got that ring flashy, shadowy thing going on and, and that even lighting. And I mean, it's cool. It's, look, it's a cool thing. It's, it is what it is. It's a one trick pony, but you know, when it works, it works. And it's a really good, affordable way to have a decent ring flash look on hand in case you ever need it without buying a dedicated one. I don't talk about the Sabre Strip enough um, or give it enough credit, but it is really a fantastic little modifier. Now, if you were to pick one of these up, you're gonna get it and go, well, it's just a shipping tube. Yeah, it's a shipping tube, but this is not your ordinary shipping tube. It's some sort of super tube. It is a very strong tube. Now, this is not just simple ripstop nylon here on the front. This is a material that comes from the sailing industry that sails for boats are made out of. And the adhesive that holds this material to the tube is also from the sailing industry. It's a very, very strong adhesive. It's not just some double stick tape and some cheap nylon stuck to a cheap shipping tube. There's been far more thought and design that has gone into this. It's really super strong. Let me show you how this sets up. I'm gonna keep it away from my crotch. At the bottom of a saber strip is this little plastic cap. And in there, you can mount a hot shoe. And what I have is a Nikon AS-E900 hot shoe that has a little pigtail with a mini phone jack on it. So I can plug it into a pocket wizard. And in here, you would mount your hot shoe flash and then slide that whole thing up inside of there. Tighten that up. And now you can mount it to your standard swivel adapter. I have two issues though with this modifier. One of them being is once my flash is stuck inside of there, uh, I don't have the kind of system to where I can change the power settings from my remote or from camera. So if I need to make a power setting to the flash, I actually need to come over here, loosen this up, pull that off, make my setting, put this back on. But in some ways that's no big deal because it's no different than having to unzip a uh, say softbox, change power setting and then zip softbox back up. My other issue though is a LumaPro LP180 doesn't really fit into one of these without a few modifications. That works. Perfect. I'm at 64th power in the Sabre Strip. I have it in pretty close to Kate here. And I am at 2.8, 180th of a second, ISO 100. And I'm gonna turn the camera on. It's fantastic. Right there, hold that, Kate. Great. Watch that head tilt just a bit right there. Hold that. Fantastic. Let's try flying it overhead. Let's see what this looks like. Perfect. Looks great. Fantastic. Good. When I'm outside shooting on location, sometimes I just shoot with a straight flash with no modifiers because the wind can be a real issue when you're trying to fly an umbrella or a soft box. But that problem has been solved by the Sabre Strip. That's great right there, hold that. Let's, let's actually move down here. I don't like this background. Let's grab the... Good, good, good. Bring in your face this way. <laughs>
Let me throw this to you, Mr. Dan. <laughs> hey, it's still fine. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions about these modifiers, please visit us over at deadpixel.com slash blog. And that's where I will be answering any questions, concerns, or comments that you might have. And also check out One Light version 2.0 if you'd like to learn about lighting from start to finish. Thanks a lot. Okay, if I say cock ring, I mean, yeah, <laughs> we are about to make the super modifier.